Just one more run. It's a time suck. It's addicting. It's kind of a runner, despite the developer's fervent objections against the label. Even so, it's fun as hell, and in a way, oddly peaceful. Race the Sun by Flipfly was officially released on August 17th, 2013 on Flipfly's official website. Before this and even since then, the game has become a poster child for crowdfunding and alternative media coverage. Race the Sun was available in a playable alpha format for free on Congregate. Flipfly raised $20,000 to fund a full-fledged release via Kickstarter, and everything seemed to be going their way from there. Every media outlet that covered the game appeared to have nothing but positive things to say. Unfortunately, without a major Steam release, sales fell short. Flipfly made their sales data publicly visible and let people know the importance of getting their green light votes. Now, the game is seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. More like green light! <laughs> and a Steam release is imminent. Which means a lot of you may now have reason to buy it. And let me tell you why you should. Race the Sun is a game that is incredibly easy to pick up and play. You may not be incredible at it on your first run, but then again, there is actually a chance you could be. You control a solar-powered ship, attempting to fly it as far as you can through regions of an abandoned desert space. Later regions become progressively more difficult, introducing falling blocks, explosions, and other obstacles. To help you along the way, you can grab pickups off the map, including a jump boost, a one-use-only shield, and a time warp, which hoists the sun higher into the sky, providing you with a little extra time. These pickups, along with other equipment, are unlocked as you level up. There are 25 total levels in the game. To unlock these levels, you need to unlock achievements, which are listed on the right side of the screen when you die. More difficult achievements, such as getting through three regions in a single run, or only going one direction through an entire course, unlocks more progress towards the next level. At level 12, you unlock the mercilessly unforgiving Apocalypse Mode, which is almost an entirely new game on its own. This map, along with the regular run, resets every 24 hours, which is one of my few gripes with the game. Procedural generation may be too much to ask for, but a faster reset interval would help provide a fresh experience more often. Sure, it's nice to be able to perfect the route you take in order to get the highest score you can for the day, but that's not exactly the appeal of the game for me. Of course, the only objective in the game is to just get as far as you can. A high score is nice too, but I eventually just stopped paying attention to the numbers on the top left, and instead I focused on squeezing out every last ounce of solar-powered juice I could get from my ship in a single run. It's in this way that I can't help but label Race the Sun as an endless runner. I know I'm swatting the hornet's nest when I say this, but I can't really avoid it. This would excel as a mobile game. Flipfly are obviously trying to steer clear of this route, but it seems in many ways that old habits die hard for this developer. Still, don't let that detract from your potential views on Race the Sun in any way. It's still a ton of fun to play the game. I find myself wanting to go pick up the controller again just watching footage of myself playing it. The difficulty level is just right, the control is tight, and I'm filled with spite, but I can't stop myself from going at it again and again. This game is absolutely worth your time, and I highly recommend checking it out. But then again, what do I know? I barely played it.